Welcome to this FireTel tutorial on handling acceleration data and how to annotate bursts. For this tutorial, we'll use an openly accessible dataset from the MoveBank data repository. To reproduce this tutorial, you may choose among two options. Option A. If you are registered with a MoveBank account, you can download the data from within FireTel. Option B is to download the files from the MoveBank repository. In this tutorial, we'll use the built-in MoveBank interface. Let's skip the sample screen for now, then use File, Download MoveBank by individual ID, and enter your credentials. You may securely store them for later use, then hit Download. This will provide a list of all studies where you can access data. Now let's download an individual. Use the search functionality down here and search for Toucan. The associated study is the Toucan movement and seed dispersal study by Kais and colleagues. Select the study and click OK. For some other studies, you may be asked to agree to the terms of use for this dataset. A list of individuals should show up. In this case, we'll stick with the individual 80046. We'll select it, and when asked whether we want to open the project or not, click OK. For now, the event data is not in our scope, so let's deactivate it. We will now get an overview of our data, so let's navigate to the beginning of the recorded events. We'll use the drag handler to move to the start of the data. Choose a 30 second duration for the whole replay. In this case, the observation period was approximately 6 days, so this seems appropriate here. For token observation, it makes sense to activate the night and day rhythm when observing movements. We can activate layer, sunrise, and observe this along with the movement data. Hit play. We can use the mouse wheel to zoom in to the acceleration data. Note that the time boundaries are updated based on the zoom level we choose. Now it is time to have a closer look at the content of the acceleration window. Let's focus on one individual via the selection tree, in this case we only have one individual, and let's focus this one via the magnifying glass. So what can we see here? Right-click the acceleration window, you will see that in fact we get all three acceleration dimensions. Red marks the x-axis movement, green marks the y-axis movement, and blue marks the z-axis movement. Acceleration data is not recorded continuously. Instead, for a given interval, so-called bursts of data are captured. That means short contiguous streams of samples are available starting at defined points in time. Modern tags would allow to decrease this interval if the energy level is sufficient, for example, for sunny days. Firetail can show you the boundaries of bursts when zooming in. Usually, it is assumed that these patterns somehow are a snapshot of the behavior before and after the recording as well. This may not always hold true, yet in the context of high-resolution data, an interpretation is obviously very useful. You may drag the acceleration window content to navigate to a region or acceleration pattern that you find interesting. Double-clicking in the acceleration window will show the associated GPS positions on the map, given it is available. We should keep in mind that the position is likely interpolated among two points. Note that above the acceleration lanes an indicator shows where GPS data is available relative to the bursts. The status view down here will show you the burst number, the sample number and the time offset within a burst and the associated date. The individual and tag number is shown here. Upcoming versions of Firetail will feature annotation of multiple individuals at the same time, so stay tuned on this one. 
For now, say we found an interesting region within the acceleration data, like strong acceleration that may indicate flight. We can then select this region via shift and left click. This will mark the region blue. The respective region is highlighted on the map as well. Of course, we can zoom in and refine our initial selection. Now, by pressing shift control and left click, additional regions may be highlighted. These regions do not have to be consecutive. Yet, for annotations it is usually more comfortable to not aim for extremely complex selections that may then get lost by some accidental click. Annotations in Firetail happen on the burst level, which makes a lot of sense given that they are usually relatively short and reflect local behavioral patterns. And otherwise, bursts that reflect change could be annotated separately as well. Now, let's annotate our selected region. The concept we rely on here are annotation lanes, that we refer to as categories. Click Add Category. Here, you can define a layer name. This is basically a logical group for your annotations. Layers can contain overlapping categories, but in practice work may get easier when you actually choose disjunct categories within one layer and add separate categories if required. For now, let's choose an abstract sample category. Let's name it Movement and assign the category Increased. We have now created the category and must hit the newly created annotation button to apply the annotation to the selection. We have now annotated this region and can repeatedly do this for other annotation lanes and other regions. Let's select another region, then hit the freshly defined category. The region is now annotated as well. Removing an annotation is done by right-clicking on the annotation on the respective lane. Note that we can edit annotations, that is, we can swap them for another category or annotation as well. So let's just replace this one and we see the annotation has changed. We can select acceleration regions via event data as well. We'll move the event data using the window menu to the top of the acceleration data. Use control drag on the event data panels to draw a threshold on the speed event. You can now see that in the acceleration window at the same time all samples are selected that correspond to events below the selected threshold. Let's annotate all these events at once as a new category, say speed for the layer and high for the category. Click on add category, we enter speed, we enter high. Fine. Next, I'd like to show you how to export and save these annotations. Save annotations for later or external use, we have several options here. The simplest way is to hit File, Save Annotations. This will save all annotation lanes in the data directory as a single CSV. Let's have a look at the resulting file. Let's open a shell, navigate to the respective folder and directory. These folders may differ depending on your platform, but in general the folder you're looking for is movebank underscore downloads. We open the annotations to CSV to have a look at our annotations. Here you can see that all our previously annotated data is now ready to be used in a tabular format for downstream analysis. Well, that's it for today. In further videos, we'll show you how to load previously annotated datasets like ML predictions, how to work with IMU data, and how to cope with huge datasets covering several gigabytes of data. If you have moving data that you would like to see in action, make sure to download Fighter today and try it out yourself. Thanks for watching.